Welcome to ATCM the Emergency Medicine channel. Today we are going to discuss the basic steps that is to be followed in measuring a blood pressure. There are ideally six steps that is to be followed in making a proper blood pressure reading. The first and the most important step is preparation of the patient. Then comes the proper technique of BP recording. The third step is measurement of systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. The fourth step is documentation of these readings. The fifth step is taking the average of the readings and final step is telling the patient the report both verbally and in writing. So first we come to the first and most important step that is preparation of the patient. In preparation of the patient the patient should be adequately relaxed ideally in a sitting position for more than 5 minutes. The patient should not take coffee, any BP medications or done any exercises prior to the procedure. The patient's bladder should be completely emptied. And also the patient has not take any drugs or any medications that affect the BP. And the patient's both arms should be adequately exposed. Then we come to measurement of the blood pressure. The proper technique in assessing the blood pressure. First, the patient's arm should be at a resting position. It should be adequately supported. Then we need to take the BP apparatus. Before that, we need to proper hand wash and then use proper gloves before measuring the patient. So first the BP apparatus should be checked. It should be adequately calibrated. We need to choose a adequate cuff size for the BP measurement. An adequate cuff size means the bladder encircles the arm 80%. And the ideal position of placing the cuff pressure is the midpoint of the sternum or at the level of the right atrium. So, First, we need to adequately hand wash, wear gloves, take the consent and check the BP apparatus, it is calibrated. Then you need to support the patient's arm in resting position. Then you need to place and select an adequate cuff size. That is a, the bladder size encircles 80% of the arm. And you need to place the cuff such that it is at the midpoint of the sternum at the level of the right atrium. Then we come to the third step that is measurement of the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure. In this step we try two ways that is first we will take the, os the palpatory method followed by the auscultatory method. First we come to the palpatory method. In this procedure first we will palpate the patient's radial artery and we will inflate the cuff gradually. At a point we should not palpate the pulse and this point marks approximately to the systolic blood pressure. Then we will gradually deflate at a rate of 2 millimeters of mercury per second. Then we come to the auscultatory method. Here we can use the diaphragm and bell of the stethoscope. So in auscultatory method we have obtained the systolic blood pressure by the palpatory method. You will uh, increase the cuff pressure 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury above the palpatory method we have obtained and gradually you will deflate it at a rate of 2 millimeters of mercury per second. So the point which we hear the Korakov sound marks the systolic blood pressure and gradually as you decrease the BP there is disappearance of the Korakov sound and it marks the diastolic blood pressure. So first initially by palpatory method we have obtained the systolic blood pressure and we will increase the blood pressure 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury above that systolic blood pressure then we come to the auscultatory method where we will gradually decrease the blood pressure at a rate of 2 millimeters of mercury per second and the appearance of Korakov sound marks the systolic blood pressure 
and the disappearance of Korkov sound marks the diastolic blood pressure. So then we come to the documentation and taking the average of these readings. Ideally, we have to take two or more recordings at two or more occasions apart. And these recordings should be documented and we need to take average of the document. You need to measure the blood pressure on both the arms at the first visit and the highest blood pressure should be taken. Then finally, we come to expressing the blood pressure to the patient. You need to convey this message both verbally and also in writing. Thank you.